Guys, subscribe and turn notifications on, leave a like and drop a comment down below. Get here first and win giveaway codes I will pin as first comment on some of my videos. Be fast and good luck. What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and I appreciate you being here. Today I bring you another Destiny 2 video and today I bring you the latest and greatest news surrounding Destiny 2. New changes coming to the game as well as Forsaken DLC being classed by Activision is basically a failure. But before we go any further guys, if you do enjoy the video and would like to show your support, you can by hitting that like button. And if you are new around here and enjoy daily Destiny 2 videos, be sure to subscribe. Okay, so let's start with the latest Bungie Twab. A few changes coming definitely worth covering. So it starts with this week at Bungie, we're looking towards the future. Festival of the Lost has come and gone. Guardians spent three weeks eliminating nightmares in the haunted forest. All that remains is an investigation into the murder of Master Ives. Many of you are still working towards some of your forsaken goals, earning titles and various triumphs. Even with much to do in game, we're lucky to spice things up a little. First up, we're dusting off the Twitch studio. We have been hearing some feedback that you want to get to know our team a little better. And here's some stories from the development floor. So we will get a bungee bounty on the Xbox One. It will be Gambit and it will be Monday, November 12th, 2018. You can watch it live via Twitch slash bungee at 10 a.m. PST. Now, good luck though if you're a European player getting into any Gambit match here because it just probably ain't gonna happen uh, matchmaking against people in the states i mean it's seriously difficult to do so we also get a bungee last wish raid along monday november 19th 2018 again on twitch slash bungee 10 a.m pst each stream will showcase gameplay with commentary from the creators of destiny 2. following our streams we have some changes coming up to address feedback we've collected since forsaken was released Incoming improvements as you continue to fight the scorn and defend the dreamy city we're collecting player feedback and looking at ways to improve your quality of life. We have a few deployments in development and wanted to give you a preview of what's on the way. Everything below is subject to change on the development floor. If issues are found or bugs arise items may be delayed. In any case we'll keep you updated on the status until this work is translated into patch notes. Starting with performance, quoting engineer Ben Thompson, we have been paying close attention to reports of long load times on console and are working on improvements to reduce these load times. Let's break down three distinct performance issues that we are looking into, each with different contributing factors. Starting up the game, signing on and selecting your character. I mean, this does take a while, it really does. Now I play on the Xbox One X, the most powerful console on the planet. Loading into activities and traveling through at a destination. I mean, this ain't too bad on the Xbox One X. It could be a lot quicker though. Loading the play inventory screen and switching between UI tabs. I mean, this can get annoying. Sometimes it seems smooth, other times it seems real buggy and slow. So yes, I'm glad to see they are looking into that. In the upcoming Season 5 update, you should see significant improvements loading into activities and traveling throughout a destination. We've been bringing new content bug fixes and patches at a cadence more frequent than we had previously accounted for. The cadence of patching has translated into some unexpected overhead within the code that is responsible for loading data into the game. All that being said, loading from orbit into the EDZ should be reduced from over 2 minutes down to just over 1 minute and we're eager to see how things pan out in the wild. Wow, that's actually quite a big difference. I'm not gonna lie though, I don't think it is two minutes on the Xbox One X. It definitely don't take a long loading into the EDZ from orbit. I mean, it could, but I just don't think it does. We're continuing to investigate load times when launching Destiny 2 and when interacting with aspects of the UI. When more information is available, we'll provide updates. Moving on to super tunings, quoting sandbox design Claude Jerome. Spectral Blades was heavily retuned to increase the reliability of melee attacks in PvP and to bolster the effectiveness of super stealth capabilities. The following changes are planned to reach these goals increasing melee lunge range of all attacks, reducing the cost of light melee attacks, increasing the number of consecutive hits required to speed up attack rate. Decreasing base attack speed to improve hit registration on intended targets. 
This is not intended to be a nerf. The goal here is to increase the intentionality of the attack rate increase so that it's most often happening when players are focusing on a single target. Pretty cool. Retune melee targeting to have great emphasis on player input, i.e. when your stick input is directed toward or which target your camera is facing. The goal here is to reduce the likelihood of melee targeting picking enemies that you don't want to hit. Increasing viability of stealth mechanics. Added a small amount of damage resistance to the stealth state. Further decreased super drain when in stealth state. Pretty badass. Now my opinion Spectral Blades, when I first started using it I liked it but then getting into the new supers in the game just seeing how underwhelming it was to use. It really was. I'm glad they are buffing it. For Chaos Reach, we tune in the energy cost of deactivating Chaos's Reach early. The intent of this tuning pass is to make it more rewarding to skillfully time your early deactivation when using this super. Essentially, it will be more punishing to deactivate the Chaos Retreat Super extremely early, but less punishing when deactivating it later in the Super. Moving on to Checkpoint Resets. Quoting user interface tester Tony Garcia, we're currently looking to add reset functionality to checkpoints in various activities, like the Last Wish Raid. We do not have a specific timeline for when this functionality will be added, but wanted to note that the feedback is under investigation. Now I am constantly seeing Glad on Twitter making jokes about being able to reset your progress in the last wish raid. So it's good to see they're actually taking that into consideration and investigating the issue. Moving on and to Iron Banner, Seasonal to do 4th edition. We are rapidly approaching the end of Season 4 which is currently set to end on November 27th 2018. You have a limited number of weeks remaining to complete the following objectives. Iron Banner. Lord Saladin returns next week for the final Iron Banner of Season 4. Season 4 has gone so quick it's unbelievable. While Iron Banner weapons introduced with the release of Forsaken will continue to be available. This will be your final chance to earn Season 4 Iron Banner armor. Now Iron Banner starts the 13th of November 2018 and ends the 20th of November 2018. Additionally, this will be the final chance to earn any Iron Banner Triumphs associated with Season 4. Moving on to Triumphs, some Triumphs have seasonal requirements. While these Triumphs do not have a score associated with them, players may wish to complete them prior to November 27th. Vanguard, Seasonal Vanguard Rank. Crucible, Seasonal Valor Rank. Seasonal Glory Rank. Moving on to the Pinnacle Crucible Weapon and how they will be affected, weapons such as the Lunar's Howl are not forgotten when Season 4 ends. While quest lines for the Lunar's Howl and the Not Forgotten are available year-round, Crucible ranks will reset at end of Season 4. Each quest contains a step to reach a rank milestone and progress may be lost for these specific steps if you do not reach the requirements prior to the season ending. Progress for alternate quest steps will not be reset. If you're in the middle of getting precision kills or completing rumble matches, you will not lose any progress in those steps. If you're within arms, reach, are fabled or legend, this is your time to make the final push. If you've not reached the rank you're aiming for by November 27th, you'll be reset to Guardian and will have to climb that ladder once more. If you reach the rank and complete the associated quest step before the season ends, you'll be all set. So guys, if you are close to getting the Lunar's Howl, if you are close to getting Not Forgotten, you're just about to reach Fabled or Legend for either weapon, you need to do so by November 27th or your progress resets back down to a rank Guardian, which would be a pain in the ass, it really would, if you're so close to getting it as well. But yes people, Season 4 is coming to an end pretty soon. Can't wait to see what Season 5 offers, seriously. But yeah guys, so that is it from the TWAB, I mean I do talk about a few hotfix patches and what's going to be applied. If you want to read through all you can, we have a link to the TWAB within the video description. But we are going to move on guys, and yesterday was Activision School, which released some interesting and startling information. The call revealed lots of info, but what's important to cover here is they mentioned D2 over the past 12 months since release has not performed as well as they expected. Sales for Destiny 2 Forsaken have not lived up to Activision's expectations. The publisher said within the earnings call they're promising investors a faster content model and new forms of monetization to the game. 
Now, in my opinion, this was to be expected. Destiny 2 upon release wasn't a scratch on the way Destiny 1 ended. This left many, many of the fanbase unhappy. And from the release up until the Curse of Osiris and the Warmind DLCs, things were going from bad to worse. I honestly doubt they were surprised at this outcome. Destiny 2, about a month or so after the Warman had been released, even though the game had promising changes promised, the player base I remember was at an all time low. Many content creators though such as myself stuck with the game knowing it would get better. Many of the hardcore fanbase also didn't give up. But let's be honest, the hardcore fanbase isn't enough. Casual players and newcomers are just as important. But the casual player would not put up with the crap fed to them from Bungie since release. Many games came out which just seriously overshadowed D2 and many people forgot about D2. Many people refuse to come back, many people are just too stubborn to come back, no matter how good the game is. The Forsaken DLC changed the game though for the better, it really did, we know this. In my opinion, it's the best DLC Destiny has ever had. The most game changing, it was almost perfect. But if you think about the changes made within the DLC, the way they impacted the game and the state it left PvE and PvP in, arguably the best experience Destiny has ever had. For most people, it was 12 months too late. Having a base game like D1, the way that game ended, it was incredible. It did take a while to get to that state, but it was an incredible ending to the game. We were promised much better in every way with D2, but that certainly wasn't the case. We have seen and heard many reasons as to why this was so. Things I won't get into today as I've covered them numerous times, mainly when D2 was down and out. But Destiny 2 Forsaken, the way the game is right now, this is how D2 should have been at release. But instead we got a stripped back game which met the expectations of nobody. From day one it was going to be a downward spiral. Until Bungie and Activision saw how deep the ship was sinking and fair play they made the right changes. It's in a much better place right now but even so it was too little too late for most people. The good thing is though Activision could drop Bungie if they wanted, they could drop all connections to the game if they wanted but I believe they have faith in the franchise and so they should. We all know how good of a game it is right now. If they promise a faster content model and new forms of monetization, if done right it could work but we will see people. Early days yet for sure, I ain't sure how they're gonna pull players back in, I mean if the Forsaken can't, what can? Let me know your opinions on this down below within that comment section guys. And on that note we have come to the end of the video. If you enjoyed it leaving a like really does help me out. If you are new around here and enjoy daily destiny videos be sure to subscribe. And hopefully guys I will see you on that next one.